Welcome back to the 2009 Galveston World Classic 8-Ball event. Mandy Ashford here with Roberto Gomez and Ronnie Alcano. Now, Ronnie, you were the runner-up to the past two years of the U.S. Open. How do you plan on winning today's game? I'm happy because I am play uh, twice uh, the last of two years in, in the U.S. So now I, I play semifinals. So I... Well, best of luck to you. And Roberto, you've also been a runner-up in a world championship. How do you plan on winning your game today? Uh, I cannot sure if I will win as long as I can give my best and focus the, the game. So that's it. I can answer your question later. <laughs> after. Okay, well, best of luck to both of you. And we will catch up with you afterwards. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Awesome. Testing. Hello everyone, this is Joey Augustin, Joey A from the Internet Pool Forums. We're here at the Moody Gardens in Galveston, Texas. It's the World Classic Pool Tournament. This is the crossroads of pocket billiards. Today we've got a great matchup between two great Filipino players, Ronnie Alcano and Roberto Gomez. Uh, Ronnie Alcano is affectionately known to me as Easy Money. I'll tell that story at a later date. And Roberto Gomez, well, everyone knows that's Superman. And in the booth with me is a really super guy as well. You know him by the name of Charles Hillbilly Bryant. Charles, welcome to the booth. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate it very much, sir. Uh, happy to be doing another match with you. And again, happy to be here at Moody Gardens. And, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing event. It really is. Uh, we're, I'm really looking forward to this match today. 
Yeah, this is uh, these guys. Uh, this is ten ball. Uh, this is a race to eleven. I didn't get a, a quick look. At, it, what, it's eight ball. Oh, beg your pardon. We got an eight ball match. I'm not paying attention here. Daddy said it don't cost nothing. Uh, <laughs> that's that's another hillbilly truism. Now you, you you know you you signed the contract though, uh, hillbilly. Uh, you know when you step into Joey A's booth. You are required, you know, by the contract to provide some very important <laughs> inside tips for professional pool player tips. So, uh, you know, I just want to let our Internet audience know that you're going to be giving it up for them. I'll do everything I can, sir. All righty then. I don't think, uh, I think they're still warming up. Uh, they got a little bit more uh, to do. I think there's an interview. No, the interview's all done. What Gomez, you know, he really hits him hard. He's got a big break. Uh, you, you notice how high he raises his yeah. arm, his elbow, and everything in the back, and uh, he, he's got an unusual. Do you know anybody that gets that high? Afghani Stalif. What's that? Stalif from Stal Russia. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I really like Roberto's game. Uh, the only flashy part about his game that you ever see is uh, is the break. Mm -hmm. He's just real smooth and steady. I notice that uh, Roberto has a, a very outgoing personality, uh, full of exuberance, and uh, just a very friendly fellow. Well, he was actually talking to uh, my little buddy that runs around with me, Mike Moon, uh, like the second day of the tournament, and, uh, you know, he was happy to sit and tell Mike anything about the Filipino players and talking about how they really work to help one another. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the things that I've brought, you know, that I've told a lot of people here on the inter internet with a couple of the matches this week. Uh, he also was telling uh, Mike that they all go to sports psychologists. They all go to, to see a sports psychologist, really? And like when anytime any of their top players as well, uh -huh. whatever tournament they decide to go to. Right. That they're the ones that make the decision of where they go. Wow, that that's an interesting uh, piece of information. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Charles. You know, I don't know much about Roberto's uh, upbringing and growing, but uh, I mean, he really he, he's really got a great personality for the sport. Mind you, somewhat of a bigger Alex. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He he likes to cut up. I I, I saw him uh, during the uh, tournament uh, uh, having a, a, a lot of fun uh, with the Norwegian players, uh, uh, Chris uh, Johannesson and uh, Per from Norway, and uh, they're apparently they've been to the Philippines a few times, and uh, they know all of the Filipino players uh, very well. And uh, Roberto apparently is a close friend of theirs. Uh, he's really a great kid. I mean, he really is. Another good image for Paul. You know, uh, I, I, I really like the idea of, uh, you know, a sports psychologist available to the top players. Uh, something else that I've always thought that, you know, the American players really needed, uh, and that is uh, a, a coach. Uh, you know, uh, coaches uh, are in virtually every professional sport on the face of the earth, uh, but you see very little uh, coaches, uh, very few coaches in pool in America. Uh, there's, you know, the, the, you've got pool instructors and what have you, but you don't have, you know, like uh, personal coaches that um, attempt to uh, help the players to adjust maybe to the new environment, to provide them with new information about, you know, maybe table equipment or maybe just, you know, conditions that are present at the tournament, maybe uh, helping them to adjust to frame of mind, uh, maybe to give them a, a little notice about uh, what they're doing wrong, what the coach sees while they're playing. You know, if someone is in your corner, don't you think uh, if they're knowledgeable that they could be invaluable? Oh, if for, for sure, Joey. I, I mean, it's something that I've been talking about a long time. It's something that's needed here in America. I mean, the players over here, they not trying to say anything wrong here or anything, but they just let pride get in the way instead of 
mm -hmm. being man enough to or woman enough to go out and ask for right. help. I mean, we all got to have help somewhere down the road. You can't do it by yourself. Or, or, or you just flounder. You know, you just you just lay there and flounder. And and, if, and you know, and I I'd, I'd like to see. You know, I see. I, I know that the European players have. Uh, you know, uh, some of them have uh, professional coaches that you know uh, spend all of their time uh, devoted to pocket billiards. And uh, while we have um, teachers, uh, you know, instructors, um, we really don't have coaches in, in America and I'd like to see more of that happening in America I, I think that's one of the uh, Achilles uh, heels of, of the American players is a, a lack of coaching well I mean uh, it's kind of with this deal with the CSI and stuff where we've brought this team together uh -huh. uh, you know this some of the ideas that I have as far as putting together for our team that we of the people that's on our team right now um, while you mention that, uh, where where uh, can an uh, internet viewer go to get some more information about CSI? Do they have a website available? I, you know, right off the top of my head, I don't know for sure. I think it's CSI.com, but, you know, they're affiliated with the BCA. Okay, and, it's probably I a mean, link on the BCA well, uh, pool, uh, BCA-pool.com's website. There, there's getting ready to be a lot more information about it. Uh, we're getting ready to do a major press release in a lot of the magazines. Uh, we're putting together stuff, like I was saying. We're getting ready to do a major press release, and I don't really want to say too much right now. Yeah, good. All right, well, we understand. No, I'm, I meant uh, good. I understand what you mean. Do you, uh, do you have a... Uh, we're looking to try and get a line on this match that's getting ready to come up. Uh, do you have a a, a pick in this uh, match? I, I pick a Filipino to win. Oh, okay. Uh, and and are you uh, accepting all wagers? Yeah. yeah I mean, giving giving, giving some odds. odds all you. right. <laughs> well, there's. Uh, I, I see Ronnie Elcano is practicing right now, and uh, for some of our internet viewers, uh, you. You may notice that uh, Ronnie has some very uh, well manicured fingernails. Yeah. A and uh, I I've 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 done done a little research on the subject. Haven't even talked to Ronnie, but uh, I've done some research and uh, I've discovered for myself that in many different Asian cultures, uh, a man who has um, uh, fingernails that are well manicured are basically a sign of a man uh, that does not do manual labor, and it's a sign of prestige. So it's something that uh, uh, Ronnie, uh, I, and again, I haven't asked Ronnie, he may have other reasons, but I understand that it's a cultural thing and that uh, is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sign of prestige. And, uh, mm. well, Ronnie is, uh, you know, one of the top players in the Philippines, and uh, I think he's earned the right to have some sharp-looking fingernails. Well, I noticed that Boosties is the same way. I mean, not as long, but you well, can definitely see they being manicured. I, I I looked at Efren's fingernails the other day and noticed that his fingernails as well. They had, uh, you know, I didn't look at his hands really closely, but I saw some very well manicured fingernails there. You know, a little longer than uh, traditional American um, fingernails. But I know for a fact that those fingernails of Ronnie's wouldn't fit in a Sir Joseph glove. He, he, he'd, he'd punch holes right through them. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's why he's got the fingers cut out on it. <laughs> that's so how, it. How's the tournament been going for you, Joe? Have you enjoyed yourself? I had a great time, Charlie. Uh, I played in the One Pocket event and uh, had some uh, great matches. Uh, I, I led in one match and I stayed leading. And uh, another match, uh, I, I came from behind. I was down two to one and managed to win two games in a row to uh, continue in the tournament un until uh, I ran into well, I, I lose two matches. One of them was to Oscar Dominguez. And... Um, he won the first game, I won the second, and I really had an easy chance to win the third game and just hung a ball up in the hole. And, you know, against, uh, you know, the top players, that's oftentimes that's all that's necessary is you make one mistake and they're out. Well, he got to two, he got to the Hill uh, game before I did and uh, managed to win the, um, the fourth game as well. So he beat me three to one. And the same thing happened uh, with Gabe Bowen. I, you know, Gabe's one of the better one pocket players uh, uh, around, and uh, and I, I was I was giving him all he could stand. Had a chance to uh, 
uh, uh, to get to the hill before him. And uh, he, he wasn't playing all that well in the match where I was competing with him. And But uh, again, I, I faltered uh, just a little bit, made one mistake. He capitalized on it, and he also beat me three to one. But uh, and, and I didn't play in any of the other events. I've been in the booth most of the time, and I've been enjoying both playing and doing commentary. That's good. good. Yeah. I'm glad you had a good tournament. Yes, indeed. And how about yourself? Uh, what, what, uh, in the tournament, or are you tournament? Uh, I, I started out as a rock waller and turned into a chihuahua. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll tell you, it's 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 good to see you uh, still here supporting the tournament after you know uh, uh, being out of the tournament, and uh, it's great that uh, you're here. You um, you made a little money. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, and, uh, I mean, I've I've had some good some great things happen. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Galveston World Classic here at beautiful Moody Gardens on Galveston Island in Texas. This is Championship Weekend. We have eight ball and 10 ball action for you starting now, running right through to tomorrow night. So let me explain to you what you're gonna see in today's program. You're about to see the eight ball hot seat match. At approximately 2.30, we will have the eight ball third and fourth place match between Johnny Archer and Nick Werner. There were approximately 90 players in this event and there are four players left. Starting this evening at 6 p.m., we're going to go back to our 10-ball division, and we have matches for you tonight at 6 p.m., 8 p.m., and at 10 p.m. And at 10 p.m. tonight, we will have our 10-ball hot seat match for you as well. First place in the 8-ball division is $15,500. Second is $8,000. Third is $4,500. And fourth place is $2,200. Our eight ball relay are as follows. If the eight ball is pocketed on the break, it is not a win. It is either spotted and the player can shoot from position or the player may break over. The table is always open after the break. That means if they pocket a solid or a stripe on the break, they don't have that group. They can still select whichever group that they like. Any scratch on the break results in cue ball in hand behind the head string. Any other foul during the game after the break is ball in hand anywhere. This is rack your own, and it is call ball and pocket. And they will do that only if the shot is not obvious, or it's a bank, a kick, or a combination. Our first player comes to us from the Republic of the Philippines. He was a runner-up in the 2007 World Pool Championships. He is a two-time Philippine Open champion. He was the Battle of Scandinavia International Invitational Nine Ball Champion. He is sponsored by Bugsy Promotions, Predator Cues, and Hustlin USA. They call him Superman. Please welcome Roberto Gomez. His opponent, also from the Republic of the Philippines. He has two consecutive runner-up finishes in the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. He is a former world nine ball champion. He is the reigning world eight ball champion. Sponsored by Bugsy Promotions, please welcome the volcano, Ronnie Alcano. <laughs> Gentlemen, lag for the break, please. Alcano wins the lag. Well, I'm looking for an exciting match here. I mean, it's a, little, a lot of great outs. Have you seen uh, a lot of uh, break and runs uh, in the eight ball uh, tournament, Charlie? Oh, yes, yeah, sir, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with the open after the break. Yeah, I, in uh, in this tournament, uh, 
if you make the eight ball on the break, uh, the ball can be spotted back up, providing you haven't scratched. Is that correct? And yes, sir. And you continue shooting? Yes, sir. I mean, it's uh, you can't win or lose all three. Mm-hmm. You know, with the winter break format, OS makes it really tough with it being open after the break. You know, I I kind of thought maybe they'd play alternate break with it. Well, let me ask you this. Balls being open after you, you mean to tell me if you make the eight ball on the break and scratch, you don't lose? No, sir. Oh, that's an interesting rule. But that's the only time when you make the eight uh, and scratch that, that you don't lose the game. Is that correct, Charlie? Yes, sir. Oh, well, here's uh, Ronnie Alcano with his first big break. Squats the cue ball and makes the two in the corner. Now he's got the option of shooting solids or stripes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You know, I'm wondering if anybody's broken run the set out here at this tournament yet. Wow, you think that's possible? Yes, sir. Especially with the race to seven in the loser side. Mm-hmm. It would be a pretty awesome feat uh, for somebody to be able to do that. Well, uh, we'd love to catch capture that on film. I actually... Uh, one match, I broke and run five. In this tournament? Yes. Oh, who was that against? I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I've seen so much pool this week and played so much, and, I mean, I ain't had much sleep here either. I've been hanging out with everybody. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the, the the games, the matches uh, start running together. The days start running together. Right after about five days, you know, pool, uh, it seems that they start uh, running together, and you, you're wondering what match you saw last night. Yeah, that's the truth. It's definitely a unique pattern of it Ronnie's got on. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's a leopard skin or what that is. Huh? I wonder if he's going to draw this ball out. No, he's going to come try to come two rails and come between the 13 and the 8 here, I, I believe. That's what he was trying to do. Ah. I was wondering if maybe he'd try and shoot it in the uh, four corner pocket, but not to be. Huh. Made easy work of that, uh, you know, relatively uh, difficult sh shape that he had uh, on the eight ball. Racing oh, this tonight. is the winter side. I mm -hmm. see. That's right. I'm still half asleep, Joey. You might have to smack me a few times, wake me up. Well, I, I, I think I'm in the same boat with you, Charlie. It's been a lot of days. Uh, we still have uh, one more big day of pool uh, for tomorrow. It's, uh, I call it Super Sunday tomorrow, where we're going to have the finals championship of the eight ball and the uh, ten ball. So we're looking forward to that. I think there will be some uh, amateur events uh, are still going on, and there will probably be some finals of that tomorrow as well. Oh, cool, cool. Super Sunday. <laughs> we've uh we've got uh five scheduled television matches today so uh i hope the internet viewers that uh are with us today uh, will keep coming back yes that's right uh this is joey august and joey a from the internet pool for Fil forums and uh yes in the booth with me is hillbilly charlie bryant the silly hillbilly. Uh -huh. We're glad to have you here, Charlie. Well, I appreciate it, Joey. I, I, I'm very happy to be here. You know, JR caught me in the hall last night. I was getting a massage and uh, says, we need you tomorrow. I said, well, I'll be there. Well, we're glad that we can count on you for sure. Well, and did a ball fall? No, sir. He didn't make nothing. Broke dry. See, the eight balls uh, hanging in the hole. It makes it a good thing there ain't no bunch of balls near it because it would make it a lot tougher run out because exactly. you're taking that pocket away. Exactly. Look like the only trouble ball might be the 15 or the 7. Yeah, he, he may try to run into the 7 right here. It's always a good idea right at the beginning of the game to look to your trouble balls and, uh, you know, separate them and get those uh, out of the way and so that you don't have to worry about them at a later date. Now he's got another trouble ball with the three, but it's not that much trouble because he can make a 
you know, triple ball combination and still continue shooting. You know, he may choose to uh, try to use the six to shoot that shot. That way he can move the 15 up out of the way of the... Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And that way he opens the pocket up for the two ball. Well, I think he's making a, you know, a, a mistake in judgment about not addressing it at the very beginning. He could have gotten himself hooked on that six ball just now. All right. See, that was truly the... See here, he probably just going to rail it in and barely move the 15 up and he's still got the six ball. Right. Good shot. He'll leave that five ball uh, to the last ball to make yeah. an easy transition to the eight. I, you know, I don't know if the internet viewers out there has ever heard this or, or you know, what I try to look for, key ball, key ball. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by key ball is the last ball I want to shoot before I shoot the eight. And then I try to find another key ball to make those three positions the easiest. And then I start at the beginning of the run out. Well, uh, Charlie, you're fulfilling your contract with Joey A early <laughs> on. And I uh, really appreciate it. And I know the internet, internet viewers uh, do too. It doesn't look like we're going to see a uh, shutout in this set. Roberto's at the table and has one more shot to pocket the eight ball. For me, I would just turn around and shoot the ball left-handed. Now, like this, this is unusual. He's using his left hand for the bridge. Very interesting. He shoots right-handed and just used his left hand to uh, I'm, with the bridge. I, I must have seen him do that earlier, or I saw another player do that as well. Wow, that's unusual there. Mm -hmm. huh. I think uh, he was uh, playing some um, some matches in the... Uh, in the main room earlier in the week, and I, I think I may have seen him do that as well, and someone mentioned that. Yeah. Must, must be ambidextrous in, in some fashion. Oh, well, we'd have to be for that to be able to happen. You know, I'd like to thank our sponsors here, Joe. Uh, I'd like to thank Predator Poison Q, which is the official cues. Simona's Cloth, which is the official cloth of the tournament here in Galveston. Aaron Pool Balls, which is the official pool balls. Ashland Furniture, the official furniture, and ain't that some pretty furniture that they've had sitting around the arena and stuff. Ashley's giving away 15, I think it's $15,000 worth of furniture. It's beautiful furniture, uh, high-end, high-quality leather uh, sofas and other furnishings. It's just, uh, you know, it, very, very nice uh, furniture. Well, it's very nice of them to step in and help like this. And then, then Hertz Rental Car, uh, the official rental car for this event here like donated 10 vans for the shuttles to run back and forth between the hotels and the airports that was really nice uh, inside pool radio one and the beard factory the official supplies that's right and when we've got uh, propool.com providing us uh, with some stats uh, the stat guys are Ron Hoffman and Bob McFerrin and Mike Moon mini me <laughs> my little buddy He's been a little punio. He's staying at my house, and uh, he hasn't been able to come out. But like one night in the last four days, uh, oh goodness, he, he caught a touch of that flu. It was at my house. Oh. I just been lucky that I didn't catch it yet. Well, well I'm sorry to hear that. What, what did I didn't catch it yet? <laughs> oh, thanks, no, Joe. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry to hear about your little buddy being ill. Yeah, my son's been sick. My daughter's been a little sick. You have one uh, son and one uh, daughter? Yes, sir. Charlie? Yes, sir. 13-year-old little boy and a 10-year-old little girl. And m one wife? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, Joe, you better be good. Can't be trying to get me in trouble now. <laughs> uh, I got more than I can handle now. I can imagine, and, and, and so do I. We've had that conversation before. Yes, sir. Uh, I got me a great woman. I love her with all my heart. Well, back to the match here. I mean, the only problem I see is, I mean, he's going to have to do something to break that eight ball out. Well, we can't tell for sure from here, but it looks like uh, the uh, one ball passes uh, the eight and the 15. 
I'm wondering if he's just going to draw back and then shoot to five. See, going from the three to the seven to the five is going to be a little tough to be able to get back up table. He's got to get dead perfect on the shot. What about uh, using the uh, ten ball as a ramrod and shooting the uh, seven ball in the side pocket and running the ten two rails into the fifteen eight? You know, he ain't going to be able to get the ten and two rails. It would have to be straight up table. You know, because if you look at your tangent line off the ball, Anytime, like we're here, if he right, that ball, right, right. He, he may not even be able to get to it. The 10 may come in front of the 15. Mm-hmm. Now, he's got a decent angle here. He may be able to power it into, but, you know, I really don't like this shot. I mean, he's taking a big risk here. Yeah. Now he's got uh, the six balls. I didn't like that shot. Yeah, I, th I think he should have went down and tried to shoot the 6-1. Or get the angle on the one to come into the one with inside English and break the eight out. Yeah. And he could have moved the 15 out of the way. He's got a little bit of a corridor with the uh, 15, 10, and 8. And it's possible. What if he shoots the five ball now and then, uh, you know, floats the cue ball out a little bit and then puts a little bit of uh, high right and drives the cue ball into that uh, little corridor between the six and the 15, 10, 8. See, I actually like getting on the other side of the ball here. You know, where, oh, where he yeah. just floats yeah. straight pa in Past there. the 14, where, where he's pointing now. Yes. Yeah. That's the way I like coming oh, in here. Well, I can see that, sure. And the only bad thing that could happen is when you go in there is run into the... Or get the, straight in. He's uh, trouble here. Uh, he's uh, in trouble here. Yeah, he's big trouble. See, instead of drawing the ball, I think he should have went between the 12 and the 14 and stunned it over and come all the way to the rail. Right. See, one of the things I like to do in situations like that is I like to go to the rail and come back out. Uh -huh. I like to come back into my line instead of going away from the line. You have a, a, a good feel for how much uh, a, a stun uh, power you need to get the cue ball to go to the rail, and you know that if you get it to the rail, it is going to bounce off. I mean, it didn't have to bounce off much, right? No, I mean, he 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 would have he would have been okay there even if he gets stuck on the rail. Mm -hmm. But here it looks like you know what he's going to try to do here. He's going to bank his six off the side rail and try to make it off the eleven. Well, looks like he just hit it kind of high, but. It's the only shot I see. And actually, that angle that he's looking at right there, he's going to miss the 11. He's got to hit real close to the side pocket. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's, he moved up, moved the point up a little bit, I think. Well, it's been an awesome shot. But you know, the 11 ball's a pretty big ball here. And it'll automatically have spin where it'll spin in the pocket because of the running oh, right, English. Right, right, sure, to sure. From, it'll, from yeah. the second rail. Yeah, that 11 ball will put a little left-hand spin on the uh, six ball, I believe it is, as, well, the, as it, the six it, ball's it, going in the hole. It won't be to the 11, but when this ball contacts the second rail, right. because it's contacting it at a glancing blow, it mm. automatically puts running English on the ball. Yep. Perfect. Ooh, very close. Mm. I thought he made it when he first did it. He hit it, got it a little too low, like I originally pointed out. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he's going to let play safe here. Yep, he is. You know, this is dangerous. I mean, if he kicks this ball in, he'll be able to kick at eight and two because it's in the big ball position with the sideboards there. Talking about sideboard being in the 10 ball? Yes, sir. Well, it looks like he's uh, maybe forced to kick two rails at this six ball, and that's no easy task. It's a it's a little ball. It's sitting out in the middle of the table. I'm amazed. You know, they kick so good, but they don't have no systems that I know of. Well, They've got to have some kind of system, <laughs> as good as they kick. Maybe it's thousands and thousands of hours at the table.
you know. But I'm just, you know, I'm not a firm believer in just being able to kick by feel. I think you got to have tracks. Well, to be well, able to kick well. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering if some of their prowess at kicking comes from uh, playing in a rotation. Oh, for sure. But uh, I mean, again, oh, he about missed that ball. There has. They have to have some kind of system, Joey, for as well as they kick continually, continually, every one of them. Well, maybe, uh, you know, Roberto's a very friendly guy. Maybe we'll have to get him in the booth one day or get him on the side and and uh, ask him about that. Well, actually, I've already asked Jose about it. And uh, one day we was, I was kicking a three-rail shot. This has been about seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. up in the city. And Jose looks at me and says, your system's a lot like mine. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Oh. Well, maybe um, are we going to have a chance to see any of those systems that uh, you've uh, developed? Uh, for sure, sir. I mean, it's just how, are we gonna, how is that going to be possible? Uh, Besides, you know, getting a you know a paid school lesson from you or something like that. Well, I'm on a, you know, I'm working on uh, like I think I've told you before. Uh, you know, I've got over 700 pages of material put together right now, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, for a minimum five books that I'm coming out with. Oh, this will be different books. Yes, sir. Oh. Each one of them is going to address a, uh, they're all instructional books? Or yes, they, sir. Uh, pool story books? Uh, not one of them stories yet. Wow. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll, five instructional books. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the Hillbilly Express. So. Everybody got their ticket. All aboard. Well, <laughs> and, and, and how do you, uh, how does somebody get in line uh, to, you know, be kept uh, abreast of uh, the, the, your you know, your uh, publishing. Well, uh, I've got a website. It's called uh, hillbillyonthehill.com. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to leave any contact information, they can go to info at hillbillyonthehill.com. And I think the score here in the match now, Joey, is uh, two to one. And that's in uh, favor of Ronnie Yano, right? Yes, sir. We've got the, the tournament director watching the match, referee in the match, uh, Ken Jones on the sidelines. Oh, Ronnie changing because he come up dry on that one break. Mm-hmm. That didn't take him long to make a make a, a decision to change. You know, every one of them break like I do off the rail using a closed bridge, and you see very few Americans at that. And I've been doing that for a long time. I, I don't believe in breaking, just using the regular closed rail bridge. Uh, um, one ball, two balls did drop. Three balls? Yes. Two stripes and a solid. The balls are well spread, and there doesn't seem to be any major obstacles there, uh, here. Uh, no, do you no see problem. anything at all? No problem balls at all. No. I think either he's going to use the three ball as his key ball or the six ball. He's probably going to go five, four, two, six, seven, three. No, he's going to go five, four, two, seven, six, three. Or he may even go three. Well, that's the the, the interesting thing about eight ball. Uh, uh, each uh, player has uh, many different choices for the patterns that they choose, and a lot of times it's just what they're comfortable with. There there are best patterns that you know for certain individuals, but uh, quite often you see players doing things see, that uh, are unique to them. I don't like this. I think he just got the three and come up for the six. Well, he has such a fine touch on the cue ball control right now. It, it looks like it almost doesn't matter, but later on in the match, wings tighten up a little bit and the pressure comes, uh, you know, making choices like that uh, could prove fatal. I, you know, I really liked once he got in that position there where he was, was shooting a three and coming back up for the six because he had so many options with what he could do for shape position for the eight. Right. One thing about it, Ronnie, don't let no grass grow under his feet. No, he's moving along quickly.
Well, it looks like Ronnie went back to his same position that he just broke from where he made three balls. And Ronnie Alcano leads the match three to one now. We got a little fortune in there, not scratching the side. And he's broke dry. I see, you know, there's a real problem here with a five ball. Uh, and I don't see that uh, Roberto can make any of the stripes very easily. I mean, there's no shot that he can really make easily. Yeah. So he's going to have to take. Wow. It's good. If he works this out, he's going to make a heck of an out to be able to get out here. Five balls, nothing but trouble. But the only shot I see that could actually work would be able to bank the five on the side. But he don't want to do that. You know, he wants to, he'd love to be able to take one of the stripe balls here. Now, a shot that I see here that he may could do is shoot the nine off of the eight in the side. But you know, that's risky too. Yeah, I think he's, he's going to try to draw. He's going to try to draw the f and move to 13. Whoa, look wow. at, right in between the 5 and the 13. That's a little unfortunate right there. Yeah. And to be able to go through all four of those balls. I, 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 that's wow. something that I think I'd, I'd have to call a bad roll. I mean, he, 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 I mean, he hit that with good side spin right in between them, and it still didn't uh, hit either one of those balls. Yeah, he's pretty unhappy with that shot. Yeah. No, I really don't see much other way to get in here. Only shot that I see that he may be able to get into that five is getting a right angle on the one. Well, if he if he would have drawn the cue ball back uh, to make that, if that seven goes in the side and he can shoot the, the one, then uh, perhaps drive the, uh, shoot the two in the side, he can float the cue ball up to, you know, to, to get in behind the five or maybe bump the five knock it out so that uh, he's able to shoot it in the other corner pocket. You know, he may have to play position just for a bank shot here, Joe. And the eight's also a problem ball. Sure, sure. In, fa in fact, the eight's a very big problem. It may go in that pocket that's uh, the four balls nearest, but that's about the only place that it looks like it goes. I think he was trying to get shape on that two to run the cue ball down there where I was talking about. Roberto has a very difficult layout here to complete the run out. I've noticed that in these eight ball matches, uh, players who are the most successful address and uh, are successful in addressing the problem balls early on in the game. Those who wait till the last minute to fix the problem. He's going to play the two off the eight and you need to break the five out. Nice shot. I didn't even see that, Joe. No, neither did I, Charlie. Got to hit it pretty hard to get it to, yeah, you got to hit it pretty hard. It's a great shot. Does he just draw the cue ball back to the foot rail down here by this first diamond uh, nearest uh, the he side might. pocket where he's standing and just take the long shot on the four? Yeah, he may not even draw it to the rail. Well, wow, good shot. Got to be careful here. He's just going to float this ball. I don't think he's going to try to do anything crazy. Right. right. The is quick. Oh my goodness, that's a unfortunate error there. See, I it was, one. It was just too hard. You know, after he'd done work through that rack, yeah, I think he'd have been better off to just float that ball in. Mm -hmm. And take what he could get, instead right? Of, instead of taking that risk of trying to know. get trying to get close to the eight ball. 
Yeah. Because that was a tough shot. Yes, Look here, was. Ronnie. Ronnie's put himself in a pretty crazy position here. I don't even know if he can reach the 11 to be able to shoot the 9. Uh, or jump cues allowed in this uh, in in the eight ball? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, just pushing out to to the twelve ball is uh, not Good. a move. No. Four ball lays too close to the hole, and I'm sure we would see Roberto whip out the a jump cue to jump over the eleven ball. It it depends on how much angle that he gives him here, you know. Oh, but if he gets a rail, that'll make it really difficult. I would, I would have pushed the cue all the way down to the foot rail. But if he does that, he gives him a bigger angle to be able to mass A to get to the four ball. Oh, okay, yeah, a little mass A, that's so, right. So if he would have come down further, it would have been easier for him to get around the 11. But it's easier for him to jump this 11 ball where it's at now versus the, the uh, having him stuck on the rail. It would have been a more difficult jump shot, right? Just yes, further sir. away. Yes, sir, but I don't think he would have jumped it then. Yeah. I, th I think he would have mass aid. And then the four ball's in a real big ball position. Well, if he had got the cue ball to the uh, to the foot rail, it would have been a little bit more difficult to mass aid the, the cue ball around there than if the cue ball was away from the rail, right? Well, you, you know with your mass aid, and you're always using high English. That's um, and when you're, you know, next to the rail, you, it's still pretty easy to mass aid a ball. Uh-huh. fortunate right there. I mean, I don't you know, from looking at the table here uh, 14 shots a little bit tough, so he's probably just going to try to float to 15 in. Even if he does miss it, then it then it's still safe. Oh, he's just elected to play safe. Whoa. Left him an edge. Yeah. I don't know if he can mess a curve this uh, and make this four ball or not. He's definitely got to take a shot at it. I don't think the jump cue is the way to do it, though. No. Either he can do that or he can try to cut the four over there in front of the 14 and at least block the hole. That's a pretty serious back kick, yes, Charlie. Yes, sir, it is. I mean, but that's, you know, he's only got one of two options. He's not looking at trying to bank uh, the four off from the nine, no. off from the if bill he, nine. The 15 would be in the way. He'd have to spin it. He's just going to try to mass A. The only shot that he has. Is great shot, great shot, great shot. We well, you know he deserved to win this game anyway after that great, you know, breaking out the balls and stuff. Yeah, that was a difficult rack to begin with. Boy, Ronnie's got to be a little flustered. Yes, indeed. And, you know, he just uh, played a safety that just wasn't adequate. Scores now 3-2, to two. Ronnie Alkin. Yeah, I see uh, we've got uh, Nick Vita in the stands over there observing the match. Got Louis Vicky showing up there too. Yeah, Chris Johannesson, uh, all the way from Norway, out of the tournament, but still here supporting the tournament. It, like yourself, uh, he's uh, here and uh, watching this great match uh, between these two champions. I see Ronnie sitting here messing with his nails. <laughs> I didn't. I missed that. Got a few people from New Orleans in the stands uh, supporting the tournament. Uh, they didn't play in it, but they decided that they wanted to come out and support the tournament. Being uh, victims of Hurricane Katrina, uh, I think they have a little empathy for the people in Galveston, Texas with uh, Hurricane Ike. And, well, they've come over to spend a few dollars. Well, that's sure nice of them. You know, uh, we, uh, all of us, you know, I don't live like 25 minutes from here and, 
we got pretty fortunate. I cut down five trees right before the hurricane come in. And just by the grace of God, uh, something told me to cut those trees down about eight or nine months before that hurricane hit. And if I hadn't, uh, my neighbors beside of me and behind me would have, those trees would have been through their house. And my I, goodness. I got real lucky. I did a bunch of trimming and stuff, and uh, I only got one little old hole in the roof. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful. Wow, it's pretty amazing here how all the solid balls are out. Yeah. And you got five stripe balls right there right next to each other. Which, I mean, you got two breakout balls would have, would have been okay, but... See, I, I'm kind of surprised here that he's not... He, he really needs to save this one ball or the four ball for his key ball. I think he's going to shoot five, six, seven... Four one, or either one four, back to the eight. That's uh, something about eight ball that I've seen. Uh, if a player uh, over rotates his position and goes up a little further than he had originally anticipated, you know the better players are always uh, ready to shift gears and move on to a new pattern. And most of them do it, especially the professional players like yourself and these guys here. Uh, they shift gears and move on to the new pattern almost, you know, instantaneously. Yes, yes. Well, see, the, the great thing about eight ball that I do love is, I mean, you've got to pick out your pattern. You know, where nine ball and ten ball, it's, uh, it, you know. That's right. I hate to say it like this, but I say that this that nine ball, especially nine ball, was invented for dummies. <laughs> because it tells you what to do. That's point right. A, point B, point C, point E, you know, or... See I, see, I figured here he'd go ahead and shoot the four ball and just draw the cue ball two rail out of the opposite corner pocket. Yeah, this is, uh, he can float up and shoot the six ball in the side pocket, but then uh, he's limited to one pocket on the eight. See, and he put himself in the same position that he had, and now he's got to cut it in with a little bit of stun inside English. He wants it to get down here and get straight in so he can float it in the six in the side and shoot the eight in the same pocket that he pocketed the one. Yeah, I think he's got that down pat. Well, Ronnie uh, hasn't got out of his chair for two ranks now. My boy was in bad position on the rack that Gomez didn't get out. May come back to haunt Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Scores now tied up. Catch up, caught up. Tree, tree. Race into nine. nine. Yes, this is the winner's side. You know, I'd like to get some stats on this match. Well, I'm not uh, sure if our statisticians are in the, in the arena this morning or not. That you Maybe didn't. the producer will hear us, and uh, if they are, I'm sure they'll send us over some uh, facts and figures. That man has had the speed brake over there on the little speed brake thing that we was doing. Really? He yeah. did have. He did? I, can you tell me who bested him? Uh, who do you think? Well, uh, Charlie, I just, for the life of me, I can't think of anybody that could break hard or fast. Oh, was had, it Bustamante? He had a uh, 31.78. I hit a 32.38. Yay. How about Bustamante? Uh, I don't think Boosty's been over. Yeah. He's uh, He's got a pretty quick uh, break himself. Yeah, I don't think he can get up there with me and Roberto. What's the, what, what's the prize uh, for that now? Well, you know, I went over and just done it for free. Uh, you know, like these guys back here with Ashley Furniture, you know, they're taking, uh, like, the top ten each day of whoever makes the most balls, and then they're going to look a winner at the end of the tournament that first place gets $10,000. Wow. And they was begging me to do it, too, and I told them, I said, guys, I said, I don't mind coming over here and doing it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to take nothing that other people could use. 
Oh, well, that's that's very nice of you, Charlie. I mean, when it comes to the speed break over there, I, I know that I got a good shot as anybody. Absolutely. And I just don't want to go over and take something from the amateurs or whatever. Yeah. Or whoever. I mean, that's just me, bud. Right. Well, people are always uh, interested in uh, knowing who's got the fastest break uh, in pool, and and that's uh, that's th uh -oh. th that ought to be a record uh, as well that uh, that is kept. Do you know of any records about who who's got the fastest break uh, in pool? I know. Uh, I mean, I, just for instance, for me, I hit a uh, thirty-four-seven about eleven years ago. Thirty-four-seven. That's fast, Charlie. Yes, sir. <laughs> you should have taken that cue ball and uh, put it in a, a collection case. Well, you know, I didn't know at the time. I mean, I was just starting to get out in the pool scene a little bit. Is at the VNEA, first year I ever went to Vegas. Wow. That's uh, a long time ago, 11 years. Uh, you're bit. still at it, uh, hard at it, and doing really well. Well, he's got a, a little tough shot here. This is a tester. But he's got sideboards. Well, oh, my goodness. Yes, Roberto broke dry that. Yep. Yeah, this seven seven stripes uh, solids on the table. Yep. See here, I mean, he definitely needs to see a one for his key ball. Well, he he may not be able to. Uh, I, I, well, right well, now, what's, what's going to be his next ball if he? Uh, I think he's, he's jacked out. I think he's going to shoot inside English, or either he's going to shoot straight top and come back across table and shoot to five. But he may have to use the one. He's probably, yep. See, one, here's a shot that I see. Once he gets under that seven four, he could shoot the seven or the four, preferably the seven, off the 11 and shoot it real firm and open up both end pockets for himself. Hmm. That's a nice shot, Charlie. I don't think he's uh, seen that one. Uh, he's, you know, I, I'm kind of surprised he didn't go ahead and go ahead and take one in that situation. Is he looking at trying to play a safety here? I don't think that'd be a bit of an idea with uh, someone that can kick like Ronnie O'Connell. He's probably going to have to, unless he wants to try to feather this in and turn the cue ball loose. Yep, that's what he's looking at. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Better be looking at that 9-11 kick. Yeah, because 11's a big ball. Uh, he, he could also uh, jump the balls, and that 10-11 combo doesn't look too pretty, though. I'm trying to make the 10 past the 11, you know, jumping over the 6 and the 14. It ain't going to do him no good to make the 1 here. I mean, unless he draws the ball back. And this is a tough shot because he's so close to the rail. I guess he's going to fire this ball and come around the table. He's probably going to run into the eight. No, he had a little straighter angle than I thought. <coughs> <coughs> See, he still didn't get low enough. And, you know, he's going to shoot the five and go up table again. Unless he elects to shoot the three, six. Or, I mean, the six, three combo. Now, what about shooting the five into that 11 right now? That's a good shot. You know, rail first, of course. Yes. He would actually like to leave it, though, so that he could shoot it with the seven and he could shoot it with some power. Oh, I miss Q. He was trying to do too much with the ball there. <clears throat> well, he's blocked a pocket for the eight ball. Yeah, I think he should have just went up table and come back down. But, well, this 14 must not go is the reason Ronnie's not going to shoot it. 9-11. <clears throat> problem, problem with the uh, 14 ball there. Does it go? You know, I've heard quite a few different people that's played on this table here say that this table's tighter than over there in their other arena. 
Well, I've been in this booth all week long, and I'll tell you, that pocket that he's shooting at, we call that the uh -huh. devil's pocket. Pocket of death? Man, that, that that pocket has spit more balls out. I mean, the 14, Larry. The ball that he's shooting, the 14? <clears throat> That's the, right. Or the 10? No, 14, where the 14 went. Well, that's the pocket that Earl missed that ball in last night, wasn't it? Or, or, well, the, and, and the pocket was wide open. I mean, there, I don't know what happened uh, with Earl on that moment. He made a great break. He, he ran just, all the balls, got to the 10, and then just got down on the shot. And you I, know, know, I know what happened. Tell he me, shot Charlie. shot way too fast. That's just, just took it for granted after getting back in the set where he thought he wasn't going to be in the set. Right. And he was ready to exhale. <laughs> Well, he he wasn't the only one. Uh, uh, Francisco Bustamante uh, had the had the match in hand, shooting the six ball directly in the pocket, a simple stop shot, and the ball jarred. And uh, Bustamante, uh, I think that was the shot where Bustamante joked with the uh, referee and said, "You shocked me." But uh, anyway. Uh, the, there were uh, Larry Neville had problems. I didn't watch that particular match, but someone else told me that uh, uh, Larry jarred four balls in that one pocket. Four balls in a match in wow. that one pocket. Wow! You know it's got to be frustrating. And uh, Bustamante uh, missed either two or three in that pocket during the match with um, his opponent. So well, I remember now the other night when I was playing on it that I missed a couple balls in that pocket. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I think uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, that pocket maybe after this match and uh, just make a little comparison with the other pockets just to see if there's any chance that, you know, maybe the pockets are slightly narrower than the rest of them. You know, it, it, it could be, too, you know, where they where they pulled the, the felt mm -hmm. that it may have a little roundness to the facing of the pocket. Yeah, that's a possibility. Well, uh, just looking at the uh, the monitor, uh, the, the the people on the internet have uh, come out in full force. Uh, we've only uh, we're just into this match a few games, and uh, we've already got 2,200 people that have visited us. We're glad that they did, and uh, we hope that you'll be staying with us the entire day. We've got four additional big matches lined up this afternoon and tonight, and. Uh, I'll be in and out the booth from time to time, and there will be other commentators to help out. Well, hey, did you? I hope you didn't forget about part of the contract. Uh, you got to buy me lunch. Oh, Charlie, anytime. time. That's uh, <laughs> that's my pleasure. And, and 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 you know, I'm from Louisiana, Charlie, so I enjoy eating. <laughs> no, well, you, in case you can't tell, I got. I broke my overhauls today because I planned on getting a good meal out of you. We're going to have to put you in a buffet <laughs> or something. Uh, you know, I don't know if I can afford the a la carte stuff. <laughs> what do you think about my overhauls today, Joe? Uh, it, it's it's fitting of, of your nickname, uh, Charlie Bryant, uh, that being Hillbilly. You got the hat. You got the earring. You got the sunglasses. You got the persona. You've you've made uh, you've created a really unique character, and uh, all of your fans uh, they love you. We enjoy your company and your your expertise in pool. It's just uh, great to have you here. Well, I appreciate it, Joey. I mean, it means a lot to me. Looks like Ronnie's going to try try to hit the high side of the nine, not the low side. Boy, barely touched that. What a fine touch that was. Yep. It hit it any firmer, the 15 would have went over on top of the two. And I really thought he was going to hit it a little firmer there. He, that, he kind of surprised me there. You know, I was just thinking just now uh, about the... I'm going to have to watch uh, Ronnie's uh, uh, grip on the uh, butt of the cue. He gripped it with the front two fingers and the thumb. I wonder if those That's fingernails the, are, are digging into uh, uh, the palm of his hand, you know, to keep the pressure, keep him from uh, putting in too much pressure on his palms. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I know that he lays the back two fingers of his hand and just lays them almost straight down. Uh-huh. Kind of like he was relaxing them. 
Well, I, you know, you see uh, all uh, different. Uh, you see different players with different grips. Uh, Buddy Hall, he's got his whole hand wrapped around the cue, and um, you know, I, I doubt, I doubt that he, he's ever gripped uh, a cue uh, with any type of uh, power in his life. But um, well, I really like the two middle finger grip, yeah. or making the middle finger the pivot point of the back and forward. Mm -hmm. So that it's easier. I mean, for me, anytime I try to use the front grip, front part of the grip, I feel like I have pressure on the front part of my forearm. Hmm. That's interesting. Seems like it seems like by me using the middle two fingers or the middle finger, it just if there ever is any pressure, it's always in the middle of my arm. Well, uh, we've got a local uh, Philippine uh, player in New Orleans, uh, Bobby H., and uh, he, he utilizes the two middle fingers as well. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, it's what I really like. I've tried all different grips because I've had a lot of questions asked about it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, really, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not such a stickler about the grip, but I prefer the two middle finger grip. Yeah, makes sense. Personal preference. Works for you. Well, it's kind of like different tips and stuff. You know, for me, I like a real firm tip. The Filipinos like a real soft tip. Yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, you, you hit the balls uh, a, a lot harder than most of the Philippine players. Uh, you know, generally, I mean, you've got a fine touch also, but, uh, you know, you're also known for some of your power shots. And, you know, the uh, I, I think I like the idea of, you know, if you're going to shoot with any kind of power, you need a little a tip than uh, you know a blue diamond or something like that yeah I mean it, it really makes a big difference it does I know that uh, um, some of the Philippine players uh, use elk masters that have been compressed you know similar to the milk dud type uh, tips that you know so, some of the uh, supply houses provide actually what they do from what I understand they soak them in the middle uh, that that some of some of the um, some of the uh, developers of the uh, Compressed tips uh, do do that. That's correct. What kind of uh, score do we have on this uh, match right now? It's a uh, five four or four four. So who's leading? Alcano. Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie's leading five to three. Well, Roberto better. I thought he tied it up at four. Well, maybe they didn't click uh, click on the electronic clicker. It's our fault for not paying attention. Remember what Daddy said, don't you, Joe? What's, what did Daddy say? Don't cost nothing to pay attention. <laughs> well, Roberto's got uh, problems down here with the 12, 15, 13. Kind of surprised he's taking these balls. I mean, the only reason that I would see is because of the six ball. If he gets the right angle on the 10, he'll be okay. What about, uh, Charlie, what about shooting the 9 ball, running into the, the, the 1, and uh, then shoot the 11 ball with a little left-hand spin and try and get underneath the end and go up and bust up, up the 12, 15, 13? Yeah, I mean, he's got a little traffic that you got to navigate. You got to get past that 10 ball, but. Here, he's going to have to just float this ball in. See, I don't like shooting a 10 here and trying to use inside English on that. It's too much work. I mean, it's too hard to predict the deflection here. I'm not sure if he can run into the uh, one ball. If he does shoot the nine right now. Yeah, the angle kind of looks like it's going to float by the one. I mean, he, if he does hit it, he's just barely going to graze it. He doesn't, uh, he just has to maintain shape on the, uh, on the 11 ball. Pocket speed. Uh, he did run I into it. it. Oh, my goodness. Well, it looks like that's what he was getting ready to do is to play the three rail shape or the two two rail shape into the side rail foot rail and into the stack of 12 15 13 
one thing about these diamonds, Joey, they are unforgiving. You only get what you make. Yeah, you earn every ball. There's no doubt about that. And that was uh, something just now where he just floated the cue ball in. I, I thought some of these shots had been missed because the player had not adjusted for the amount of deflection. You know, with the dryer table, the lights uh, shining on the um, on the cloth, uh, it allows, uh, you know, less. Uh, there's less friction av available for the cue ball. And so, you know, you put a little... Uh, Side spin on the on the uh, on the cue ball, and you know, all of a sudden uh, you're missing shots. Wow, did he just miss it? Up? He just he, he must have just took his eye off of it. He was worried about the six ball. Well, he dislodged one of those uh, balls that was giving uh, Roberto trouble. See, Roberto is going to shoot this ball with a little bottom left and just come into the fifteen. Can he can he actually uh, get to that uh, 15 with low left? Yeah, yeah. As long as he don't snap it too hard. <clears throat> Going to have to you remember lower, the other day, lower speed. Yes. Remember the other day I was talking about the push stroke? <clears throat> That's when, right. When Ephraim was on the table? <clears throat> well, see, here he would love to be able to push through this ball to get maximum angle from first rail to second rail, but it's going to be hard for him to do it. He's just got to... Now, here... You know, I'd probably just shoot to 12, end of the nine, because of the big ball. Yeah, and, and certainly the 12 would uh, re either remain by the pocket or fall. Okay. Can he uh, well, make he's got the 13? Room to make to 13. Yeah. Apparently so. Off left hand spin. Make sure that he makes it. Now he's got to be a little careful here. I think I'd shoot to nine and then the fifteen, then the eleven. Well, no, uh, no. easy transition would be the fifteen, you know, ten, eight, as the last three balls, you yes, know, sir. a key key ball, as you had mentioned. But here he's probably going. He's just going to try to get up for that eleven ball right now, I believe. Oh wow, he went a little further than he wanted to. He wanted to hit that five ball solid. Yeah. <clears throat> this, uh, now he's just created a, a, another obstacle for himself to overcome. Yeah. I mean, this is a little bit of a tricky position from the nine to the 11. He may have to go ahead and try to spin the 11 in. I don't know. Uh, I, it's kind of hard for me to tell the angle. I know it's a steep angle, but I don't know if it's unmakeable. Here he's just going to use the rail, and he's going to come up towards the seven. Wow, I didn't think he would come around it like that. I thought he would just come over there near the seven right. and shoot the eleven down here in the same pocket that he's going to wind up shooting the eight in. He made a fine shot. Yes, he did. Made a great shot. He just don't want to get stuck on the rail here. It looks like the score is going to be five to four. That's right, five four. With right at twenty five hundred visitors to uh, the live stream, great to see all these people here. Time out. Sorry, guys, we was wrong. It's four piece. I see my son has uh, joined uh, in the uh, group of people, the fans that are watching this uh, match, and uh, he's with a friend uh, in from New Orleans uh, just to help support the tournament. He's come in for a couple of days. Uh, wasn't able to take off from work, but he managed to spend his weekend down here in Galveston to spend a few dollars to help out the local economy. Well, we sure appreciate any help right now, y'all. It's also good to see family uh, when you've been away from the, the house for several days, uh, which I have. and We uh, visited uh, the uh, Galveston Historical Museum this morning. We did a little research on my family. Uh, my family's originally from the Galveston area. Uh, 
my ancestors uh, immigrated from Dubrovnik, uh, Yugoslavia, in the late 1800s, and they were here for, uh, in the in the, in, the, in the, uh, 1900 when the great hurricane of 1900, uh, uh, you know, took so many lives, eight to ten thousand people, and. Uh, this is uh, the museum is real nice. They, we went to a theater that uh, uh, illustrated uh, some of the historical facts and uh, told the, the tragedy. And it was just uh, great being with him and being able to share that past history uh, with him. Well, Joey, I, I, that's definitely uh, very unique. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, it, it, it's pretty fortunate for you to be able to go back and find your history of your families and stuff. Yeah, that's uh, it, our, our our family's a very uh, small family. We don't have that many family members, uh, and you know, all of them uh, lost their lives except for my grandfather, who was 14 years old uh, at the time of the hurricane, and he survived by holding on to a tree. And uh, I've mentioned this story on a couple of the other live streams, and you know, if it. Uh, if, if the story's getting a little old for some of uh, you uh, listeners, I apologize. Uh, but, uh, you know, we had a little uh, visit there at the Historical Museum, and I thought it was appropriate to bring it up while we're taking a little break here. That's right. Uh, the score is 4-4. Four to four. Our electronic chart... Uh, was a little off, but it's back. It's been corrected. Ronnie Alcano is playing Superman, Roberto Gomez. Well, we just got an update that the score is actually five to four. Well, what's going on here? I mean, one time we're right and one time we're wrong. What is it? I don't know. Well, I guess it's our fault for not writing it and making sure. Yeah. Five four or 4-4? Oh, we're trying to work the bugs out here, y'all, and figure out what it is. We think it's 5-4, to four, Alcano. Uh, he's playing Roberto Gomez from uh, the Philippines as well. Uh, you know, up-and-coming star, uh, he's really going to turn into something, for sure. He's already a great player. Well, the lighting uh, conditions have been improved immensely on the TV table since the original... Uh, first match uh, of the tournament, and uh, we've, we we have no shadows uh, on the table, and uh, the table's playing extremely well. We actually switched out the TV table a couple of days ago because uh, some players had noticed uh, a minor um, n nuance that uh, it, it was one of the pockets of uh, the table was leaning a little bit, so we just swapped out the table, and the new mechanics came in and leveled the TV table perfectly, and we haven't had one complaint from many of the players that have played on it, except that the table plays extremely tight. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, if you win a match on this table, you've earned the match. For sure. I mean, <laughs> you only get what you deserve on this one. Well, Roberto is uh, back at the table and seems to be racking the balls. Ken Schumann, our tournament director, is uh, cleaning up that measle ball that that we so that we love to look at. And uh, I don't think I've spoken to one player who uh, has said that they do not like the measle ball. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I, I love the ball. I truly do. I mean, I was kind of surprised that we don't have them on all the tables. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, as uh, you know, the popularity of the measle ball continues to increase, uh, we'll be seeing more and more tournament uh, promoters uh, utilizing the, the measle ball. Well, Superman's 
getting ready to crack them up. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom shaka laka laka. Boom shaka laka laka. Well, he's got a little tricky. Yeah, it's a little tricky here. I think Roboto here is going to take the, uh, probably take the stripe balls. Now that 10 ball is going to give him a little bit of trouble. He didn't want to make that ball for sure. Well, that was ball that goes was, in the side. No, that was going to be a safety net. Ball, there. Right. Yeah, he's got some, uh, he's got a little problem here. Yeah, he definitely didn't want to make that ball too. He's in trouble here. Now I think he's going to have to take the ball on the 15, Joey. And then shoot the 10 ball and then, oh, he was trying to bump the 15. Wow. At least uh, the 15 can go in that four corner pocket. But he's looking to see if he can make the nine. It doesn't look too good. Yeah, he's... Maybe. I, I'm surprised he just didn't take the bank, because it was a pretty easy bank. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was pretty just, reasonable. Just stopped the ball. You know, also, if he had just stopped the ball, he could have shot the nine in and come around two rails and maybe even got under. I'm going to try and shoot that ten ball past the four. Great shot. I mean, I trying to hold AQ. Shoot the 15 next. No, uh, he may leave a tough shot here too. He's flustered at himself here. Eight pockets. <laughs> he left it pretty tough, though. Ronnie really don't have a whole lot here. You know, something he could do is uh, shoot to six and shoot to six into the bottom side to one and play a safe here, get the one to go up a little bit in front of the cue ball, because the six is going to force it to go up just a little, and he's float the cue ball in behind the one. Well, I mean, he's got to get the cue ball to continue to follow, and I'm not sure once that six ball hits the one, uh, the six may come to a stop, and he may have a little difficulty driving that cue uh, forward to keep, uh, run, uh, keep uh, Roberto off on the nine. He's definitely in a tough position here. The only other thing he could do possibly is float to five up in front of the nine or try to float it in the hole to make it. Because the 15 is blocked by the seven. And if he floats this ball, the 10 ball will be blocked by the three. I mean, yeah, he could pull out the jump cue, but I think that's all I see that he has, really. Yeah, he's going to just decide to go ahead and bear down on the five ball and make it. I think he's really going to roll it soft, though, where if he does miss it, it blocks the hole. Right. Good shot. Now, he's got to be careful right here when he shoots his two ball to not get hooked behind the 10. And if he shoots it too hard, he's possibly going to scratch here. So he's going to jack up to stop that. Well, 
he, he still can't get to that seven ball on a couple of shots. I know he wishes uh, he was shooting at the seven and moving that one six around a little bit, at least to move the one a little bit so that he'll be able to pocket the one and the six. If he, if he waits to the last minute, uh, funny thing happen at the last minute. You know, it's rare to see the Filipino shoot that hard. You ball jumped up off the table. Yeah, you saw that? You don't see them. Yeah, I mean, it's rare really to see them shoot real hard. It's usually when they lose their cue ball some, or when they make mistakes is when they're actually firing the ball. Well. He may have got in trouble right there. Yeah, I don't know. If he's, it may push in the hole. I don't know. Is he thinking about drawing into the 6-1 now? Boy, he's really got a genie to be able to get to that ball. And again, bad things happen when you wait to the last minute to address some of these problem balls. Oh, he thinks that he can make it. He thought he missed that ball. Did you see his reaction a little mm -hmm. bit? Mm-hmm. Nice shot. I don't know if he'll shoot this one with outside or inside. He'll probably shoot it with outside and just come up to the center of the table. Four is now six to four. Well, we just heard the tournament director acknowledge that score as well. I see uh, Brandon Schuff is in the wings uh, looking on, uh, checking out these two uh, great players. Our uh, stat guys have just brought us some uh, new statistics uh, on this match. Uh, Ronnie Alcano is shooting a 926, and Roberto Gomez is shooting an 880. <laughs> There's uh, room for improvement on both players' parts, and I'm sure they'll be striving to do just that. Yes, I, I noticed on the thread on here that uh, the the amateur tournament was played on seven foot table. Had a lot of follow on that ball, on that on that cue ball. It didn't make nothing. <clears throat> The fingernails are, uh, in many Asian cultures, are a sign of refinement, uh, a, an indication uh, that the uh, individual with the, the man with the well-manicured fingernails is someone of prestige and uh, is not uh, involved in manual labor. At least that's what my research tells me. I'll have to confirm that with some of my Pinoy friends and These balls are spread pretty well. Stripes definitely looks like the best choice. I don't really see no problem. The only problem, I, the only problem ball that I see is the 10. Do you see the um, 14 uh, 11 as your key key ball? Or, you know, he's going to have trouble cleaning that uh, 15 and 9 out right now. And, you know, I, I think he's going to have to try to come on in here and get in there. Maybe m make just the 11 ball a soft touch on the 14-11, leaving the 14 in the hole. Yeah, I think he'll come two rails, and if he gets 
Well, it's rolled and rolled and rolled. He's going to have to shoot the 10 ball. Yep. Shoot the 10 and just draw it back a little bit. You got the 15 or the 9 in the side pocket, as long as he can reach it. That's right. Well, he's shooting over a ball, so it, that's no fun, uh, especially when the cue ball's on the opposite side of the table from where he's standing. Well. He'd like to come just a little further. <laughs> Half a ball rotation, he'd have yeah. been picking up that nine. Yeah. I think he's wanting to use the ten ball as the key ball and just float it down. I'm surprised that he doesn't shoot the, the, the ten ball, just lean over and shoot it right now. Uh, you know, because if, if he gets a little bad roll on that, uh, if he gets bad poor position on the ten ball, you know, and the, he's fighting the six. You never know what will happen later on in the match, and the six is partially blocking the ten ball. No, he's yeah, missed. it's just too risky. To, yeah. You know, shoot to ten, and then fifteen, fourteen, nine, eight. Uh-oh. Look at this. This table's fast. Looks like Ronnie's uh, stepping out. Well, there's been a little bug running around this week, everybody. You know, uh, I, you know, I try a few different things. Uh, I actually, I play with a Tiger X shaft and a uh, Paul Summerall Q. Yeah, we heard a, uh, a rumor that uh, Ronnie Alcano was uh, having a, he was uh, feeling uh, ill last night, and uh, apparently he's still su suffering some, some of the ill effects. No, I'm kind of shocked that he drew that ball that far. He could have oh, yeah. sh shot the 15 or the 9. In the side. Right. You know, it's just, just misstruck the ball. I made a fine shot there. Wow, what a shot. What a shot. You know, he, he recovered. Uh, you know, it, this wasn't something that the table gave him. He gave that difficult between ball shot uh, to himself. Now he's got... Uh, one, one that's uh, also difficult. He has to make sure that he gets up high enough on the nine ball where he can still make the eight ball. Yeah, looks like he's just going to draw it to the end rail. You know, he doesn't want to run that cue ball up between the five and the six unless he, you know, I mean, that's, that's almost suicide there. I mean, that's he... begging for a, a beaten. Got to put a good stroke on this ball. You know, you may want to elect to use just a little bit of bottom inside and come two rails and maybe even run into the reef. Bottom inside. Hmm. Yeah, 
Either he's going to fuse that or the bottom out, so I'm going to come up one rail. Well, he didn't come up uh, extremely high, but he may be able to still hold the cue. Boy, he's going to juice this one. Yeah, these uh, tables are sl still sliding uh, real well, the heated uh, table from the from the lights. And he doesn't grip the cloth quite as much uh, on these uh, rails on these type of shots when the when the cloth uh, has so little friction, so little moisture. Now here he's just going to use low inside, I believe. He may even try to run into the five, Joey, and come back over. That's dangerous if he runs into oh, the five. Wow. How'd he hit that ball? Perfect shot. He recovered, recovered quite well. You've got to be careful here and not to scratch off the five ball. Mm. Oh, you're right. It was aimed for the edge of the five there. You know, I'd really like to thank Louis Vicchio and Bobby Rohn and Clark Rohn for putting together the Galveston World Classic. You know, the bringing in all these nice diamond tables to play on. Again, I'd like to thank our sponsors for this tournament here, uh, Predator Pools and Cues. Simona's Cloth, Aramith Pool Balls, Ashley Furniture, Hertz Rent-A-Car, Inside Pool Magazine, Radio One, and Beard Factory. Well, Tony K61, fat boy, all you guys and girls out there, we appreciate all the nice uh, compliments that uh, y'all paid, and uh, we, we, we really do. Thanks a lot. Boom goes the dynamite, but off the table he lies. No, he did that one time in warm-ups. I, I didn't figure that he was going to... I mean, I figured he'd have that under control. Yeah, I think he uh, joked about it uh, flying off the table like that. That's never going to happen again. But he's got that big, powerful break and uh, raises his arm and elbow up so high in the air and gets such good speed. And as you had mentioned before, uh, he held, uh, formerly held the high-speed break out there. And on well, that time, if you don't hit him really square, bad things can happen, eh, Charlie? Yes, sir, for sure. The secret to the break is he a pain in time. It really, really is, means a lot. Yeah, I don't see no problem here at all with him getting out. <clears throat> now, I think he's going to shoot to seven in and draw back out. If not, he's just going to shoot soft and get a little bit of an angle on the four. That, don't, uh, don't six, six ball, six balls, you know, he's just, you know, I don't like uh, him having to travel across the table to get back to the, the six is his key ball. Yeah, I don't like that either. He he needs to get an angle so he can get back to that six ball. But I think hmm, he's got to be careful a little bit here. No, he needs to go ahead and shoot the five ball right now, Joey. I'll tell you what, uh, I, I, I would try and find a way to get on that six if I could. Maybe shoot the five and then the one six. As long as he didn't get, you know, straightening or cutting the ball and having to go to the bottom side, he should be okay here. Yeah, if he draws this draws this ball, he has to make that uh, four ball in this corner pocket. I, I think I'd follow it on up. I, I think that's what he's going to do. It don't look like it. No. no. He didn't like it, so, I mean, he's got no, no trouble here. This ball, at the angle it is, it should come with low English. 
it, it'll come about three diamonds back on the opposite side rail. That's uh, right about three diamonds. I see you poke up and say you're telling the truth. <laughs> I was counting, Charlie. <laughs> you know, that's another one of the things that I use when a ball's close to the rail like that. Unless you put the super stroke on the ball, the best you can absolutely do, you know, like shooting in and say you got a 30 degree angle or a half ball hit. Yeah. The absolute best you can do is three to three and a half diamonds. Oh, okay. Uh huh. On the opposite side rail when you're right. drawing a ball out. I see a lot of people, a lot of times, like a ball be one ball out of the corner pocket down here, mm -hmm. and they try to draw it above the side pocket, and they, they just can't get it done. Yeah. I understand that perfectly. You know, I, I'm, I'm really pleased to see some of the non-billiard suppliers uh, sponsoring uh, this uh, free live stream to our Internet viewers. Ashley Furniture, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I, when I get home uh, from my trip, uh, I'm going to jump on the Internet, uh, find their email address, and drop them a little note and let them know how much I appreciate their involvement in our beloved sport. Uh, Hertz Rent-A-Car, well, I'll tell you what, you're... you're you're quickly becoming my favorite rent a car of choice. Yeah, I mean, it's something that we need more of. We need more outside sponsorship for these types of tournaments and different things. So that, uh, you know, people are just looking at I mean, it. really helps us a lot. And uh, I, I think it's a good avenue for them. And I truly believe that we can do something to help one another. Well, the. The people that come out to support this tournament have shown that uh, to the Taylor Road production people. And, you know, the word on the street is this isn't the last Taylor Road production. No, sir. I think Ashley's coming in as a major sponsor for the next tournament. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, we we and, need uh, all the non-billiard uh, sponsors that we can get, non-billiard supply uh, sponsors that we can get. <laughs> There's a couple more, uh, I mean, I was talking to Louie, and Louie said there's a couple more good things in the works. Well, Louie and Louie Vicchio and Bobby Roan and Clark Roan uh, and all the other production people involved in this uh, operation uh, deserve, all, you know, all the breaks that they can get. Uh, they've worked hard to, to evolve this e event, and uh, they've made improvements since day one and uh, continue to do so. Yeah. You know, anytime you do something for the first time, it's always going to be a big learning experience. That's right. And uh, I know the guys, uh, you know, I really wish they would have had some more support, Joey, because, uh, you know, they're going to take a, they're, they're going to lose some pretty good money on this tournament. Yeah, that's, uh, th you know, this is such an expensive event to put on, and uh, they they are going to, you know, they're going to get a nosebleed uh, from this, uh, but, you know, they're they're learning. Uh, they're learning what's uh, necessary, and I'm sure that in the future they'll be making some changes that will improve their financial condition. For sure. Boy, Ronnie's got a very nice touch. Well, it took him quite a few strokes. That's unusual to see him stroke that many times. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, look what he did with the 13 ball. <coughs> He's got a, you know, he might want to shoot the 12 ball here. And go ahead and come back over for the 13. Mm -hmm. See what he may have to do here. I mean, that, thir that 12 ball is in a little bit of funny position. Yeah, but the 12 ball can go in either foot corner pocket and even is he just a couple gonna, other pockets. Is he just going to bump the backside to 8 and get a shot on the 12? No. Nope. Shoot in the same pocket. Wow. That's where that push comes in. So much to play there. Well, I don't think he wants to uh, leave the 12 ball for a key ball, so he's shooting it right now. He would like it. You know, I don't know if he's going to try to come back across this line to shoot the 10 in the same hole. 
you know, that's a little tricky. And Roddy needs to get almost dead straight in on this 10 ball, Joey, so he can follow through two rails. Right, I see the two rails. Right now. But I think he got too much angle. He may come across here. Yep. That makes it, you know, he's a tall fella. Uh, Ronnie's a tall fella, so he'll be able to reach across the table and go to two rails, uh, maybe three rails with shape. Well, there you have it. Uh, the score is eight to five in a race to nine. Uh, Ronnie's on the hill, and uh, looks like Ronnie's breaking. Feel go back to the center of the table again. That's what he just did a second ago. He was breaking from the left side rail. Well, I, I like the uh, the touch he had on the shot just before the thirteen. Uh, manipulating that uh, cue ball to that position where he could just barely get past the eight. Uh, it was just a great shot. Well, it was definitely a, toughy a touchy position because uh, the cue ball and object ball was so close together, and for him to put such a wonderful stroke on that ball, he hit that ball pretty amazing. One of our sponsors, ProPool.com, the stats guys, has just provided us with a new set of statistics. Uh, Ronnie Alcano is shooting a 948, and Roberto Gomez is at 879. And both of them uh, continue to make some improvements. Well, it looks like Roberto is uh, staying about uh, his same number. He was clocked at 880, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago, and uh, Ronnie has kicked it a notch. To 9.48 from 9.26. Well, Ronnie broke dry again. Did he break from the middle? I was uh, yes, sir. looking at the statistics and missed uh, his break. Well. I see, you know, a couple of little issues there at the with the rack, uh, with the layout on the table. Eight balls kind of stuffed in there between the 7 and 10. And, you know, somehow he's got to move that uh, 15 and 10 out of there, and as well as the 8. Well, he got the perfect angle here to go ahead and get rid of one of the problem balls. He's going to float over, and he's going to 12. Right. Next, after he shoots the 11. Uh, yeah, the 9, I mean the 11, the 12, and then maybe the uh, 9. You think uh, when he shoots the 9, he'll roll into those balls? Oh, he didn't get... He might be forced to shoot the nine now. So he may have to come around two rails. I don't, th I don't think the 15 passes the 10 in the corner pocket, does it? No. See here, either he's going to try to hold it or he's going to come around. He wants to get rid of that problem ball, the 12 ball right now. Like he got two straight. Oh, yeah, that, that fifteen must must pass. It's definitely close. That's for sure. shot I didn't think it'd go from my, the way I was looking at it yeah we, we've got a little different angle than what the players have so sometimes uh, the shots just aren't uh, you just can't perceive an angle from the commentators booth
again, Joey, I'd like to thank all my fans and stuff out there for always supporting me and everything. And uh, just look forward to spending more time with all y'all. Well, <clears throat> we appreciate you uh, being involved in the sport and, and, and giving back to the sports. You know, sitting here in the commentator's booth uh, with us, it uh, shows uh, what a generous uh, guy you are and, you know, sharing your knowledge and, and your time, your valuable time with us. And your fans and myself and Taylor Road Productions, we all, we all appreciate your involvement with this tournament. Thank you a lot, Charlie. Oh, you're very welcome. I mean, uh, just that's what, you know, it's nice to get to do something that you love to do. Not a lot of people get to do that, Joe. You're right about that. Well, right now, Ronnie's not loving this layout, but he's trying to figure out a way to... That's what I was just thinking. You know, I was looking at that 11-3 because it's actually open after the break, so you can use a stripe to make a solid. Mm -hmm. If he can get that 11 ball to follow a little bit and get a get away from the uh, 6 ball, might free up the combo on the 7-6. I don't think he's going to follow the cue to... To dislodge the six seven. Those are the only problem balls in 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 the solids, but he really doesn't have much of a shot on the uh, on the stripes. Maybe the ten ball in the right past the two, but that's about it. He's going to choose to just five ball. Well, he's going to have a bunch of bunch of problems at seven six three down there. Oh, he missed the shot. Look at this. Just flat out missed it. Wow. Oh, wow, the five went all the way back up there to the other end of the table. I'm wondering if uh, Roboto is going to try to... He might make a hmm. It's a little touchy up here. Rocano is on the hill, needing only one game to win this match. This is touchy here. A lot of bad things could happen. Well, of course, a lot of good things could happen, too. Nothing but good stuff. The eight ball is the only problem right now for Roberto, and he's got a few choices on how he's going to deal with this. See here, I think he's going to shoot to seven and barely bump, bump the 14 and then bump the three ball a little bit up. What about uh, shooting the seven and barely bumping the eight ball and then shooting the three, six, and then the four? Yeah, it's touchy with this bridge, oh, Joe. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's what he did. And ju I think, oh, yeah, but it's the, these pockets are so tight. <laughs> I, I, I think I could shoot the eight ball in with my cue stick, but... I'd hesitate to shoot it in with the cue ball. Now he's going to be left with basically the same shot on the 3-6. Why would he want to shoot the 4 right now, Charlie? He, you know, he, he's just in a funny position here. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the 4 ball might be a, an, a, a scapegoat for him in case he gets... Uh, you know, poor shape on the uh, uh, the three. I don't see. I, I just don't. I don't see this. Well, what I think he's going to do is try to shoot to four and and actually get a shot to shoot to six. He'd, he'd ideally love to get in between the fourteen three and actually have a shot. Does he do it? And even if he don't get there, now he can shoot to three, or maybe off the eleven, and mm. open and open the hole up. Mm. Good, good, good thought there. I like that very much. He's got to hit the eleven ball mighty thin, though. 
Yes, he does. See, he just shoot it soft and get the right angle. He can still shoot the eight down the corner. No, no good there. Well, all Ronnie's got to do now is complete this run out. He's got a serious problem with the uh, three ball. I think he's going to try to maybe shoot the three into, uh, I mean, the 11 into the three. Put the cue ball behind the eight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks good to me. Got there. Left go man is a pretty good kick though. He's gonna to try to kick it one rail in the lower left hand. Wow, I'm surprised he's trying to kick his ball on the side. He could try to kick it down in the corner and he's got sideboards off the fifteen. I mean not sideboards, but he would have an ex something extra to help him. That's a mighty mighty tough shot here. Well either one of them. Long distance, eight foot. Where did I say an he should eight kick foot it? kick? Wow, look at this man kick this ball in. Ron was already at the table. <laughs> he kicked it in where I said he should kick it in, and he called it in the side pocket, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> I think when he said this side of the table, I think he just meant anywhere on the left side of the table. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Be nice if you could call it like that, wouldn't it? You better believe it. Think he's gonna shoot the ten ball next? Uh, he's probably gonna float around and shoot the thirteen, maybe. I see these uh, players uh, avoid these combos, even though the thirteen ten lot is nice. They avoid them at all cost. For sure. Well, this is not all that great here. Just going to draw it back for the 12. Well, look like Ronnie's going to get out here and win this match, Joey. That's the way it looks, Charlie. We've got uh, plenty more matches uh, coming up shortly, and uh, we hope that uh, you'll stay with us. Well, Joe, it's been a true pleasure working with you again, sir, and uh, look forward to meeting us again. Uh, Charlie, uh, I'm going to go we, get we, some coffee in me. Uh, I'll <laughs> tell you what, I may, I may even follow you over there. It's uh, been a long week, and I, I need a little coffee myself. Thank you again, Charlie, for your time and all your great tips. Uh, I know the Internet viewers all in, enjoy you greatly out here. And, uh, you know, it's uh, we've had like uh, 3,800 people that have you know visited our our live stream and uh a lot of that's got to do with you charlie thanks oh, again oh joey you do a great job too sir and i'd like to give you all the perks uh, i mean you really really do a great job thank you man take care
Christina De La Garza here with Ronnie Alcana, who just defeated one of his friends, Roberto Gomez, in the hot seat match for the 10 ball event. Congratulations. I know that you, I don't know if our fans at home could see this, but you were sick most of this weekend and you were kind of sick during this match. Did that affect how you played? Yeah, I have a sick. Uh, if I eat, and then after eat, after 10 or 15 minutes, I like, uh, like this. So sometimes my body is no good. Well, um, congratulations on your win. I know that you are not feeling well, so you want to get going. Um, but c congratulations and good luck tomorrow. I think you, you don't play again until tomorrow, is that correct? Yes, thank you. Okay, tomorrow. Well, get some rest and good luck in your next match. Uh, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. We have Nick Varner and Johnny Archer on the table at 2.30. Thanks.